Hi, Spartan here, and in this video I'm going to show you how I go through a CT scan of the chest. And I have a systematic way to go through a CT just to make sure that we don't miss anything subtle that may have been missed. Uh, so in this example, this is a 41-year-old male who's had small volume hemoptysis for some period of time. And what we need to do is have a look at the CT to see if there's any cause for hemoptysis. But we'll also go through systematically to make sure there's no other abnormalities that may, may have been missed. So here we go. So here is the CT scan, axial views, and I start off with the lung windows. And I usually like to just scroll up and down quickly first, just to see if I can see any obvious abnormalities. So any masses or areas of consolidation or pulmonary infiltrate that we could see. And so on first inspection, this all looks pretty normal. Now what I'm gonna do is look at each sort of lobe individually in each section of the lung. So here we are through the upper lobes, I uh, can see that the lung tissue is very normal. There's no interstitial changes around the periphery of the lung. There's certainly no infiltrate. The pulmonary parenchyma has the normal appearance through the upper lobes. No nodules. The fissures we can see here. So here's the upper lobe. This is coming to the middle lobe and the lower lobe. And on the left we have the upper lobe here divided by this fissure and the lower lobe here which all looks very normal. As we're coming down into the, the heart and further into the lower zones in the lower lobe, the lungs look normal. Certainly no areas of consolidation or infiltrate. Just down here you can see just this looks slightly different to this side and you just get the idea that there's a bit of movement artifact here. So that's normal. Uh, just a little bit of movement there gives that appearance too. So, so that's not an abnormality. Here we are coming down into the bases of the lungs. Here's the diaphragm on the right with the liver below. And we're about to come into the diaphragm on the left. And we want to look down right into the lung bases because sometimes things can be missed right down at the lung base. But here at the lung bases, everything looks completely normal. So it's good. So the next thing I like to do is to have a look at the airways. And I think that this is one area where things can be missed. And in the setting of hemoptysis, this is really important because sometimes there might be a mucosal abnormality and it's hard to see. So what we're going to look at is the, is the airways. So this is the trachea just below the vocal cords. And we're just going to move down, just looking really carefully at the, the trachea and the airways to make sure that this should be really smooth. The bronchial mucosa there should be really smooth uh, as it is. So that's all looking really good as we're coming down the trachea. Here we are coming to the main bifurcation and so here's the upper lobe bronchus heading off here to the right upper lobe and here's the anterior segment and the posterior segments and as we come down we're just going to come to the main carina here's the carina which looks nice and sharp and so this is just below right upper lobe takeoff now so this is bronchus intermedius and this is left main bronchus so we'll just have a look at the right side first and so here we're just going back a little bit to have a look at the right upper lobe bronchus and this looks really nice anterior and posterior segments and if we move more proximally we get to see the apical segment coming off here and the apical segment seems to come off proximally from the anterior segment which is a very common very anatomical variation but then as we look up here we're just looking at these airways here so you can see the little holes with air or black in the middle is air and these airways look normal and we'll just go back up to the apex watching those airways now in particular and we can see little airways here that look normal so let's come back to now bronchus intermedius we'll stay on the right here's bronchus intermedius we're going to go down to the right middle lobe now which takes off just inferior to the branch of the pulmonary artery coming across here so come down and here's the right middle lobe with the medial and lateral segments of right middle lobe and once again the airways look really smooth very normal we'll just follow them out to the periphery of the right middle lobe the right middle lobe extends right down to here and out here we can't see any airways which is normal let's come back now to the center we'll go to the right lower lobe so here's here we're coming into the right lower lobe and the first segment to come off will be the posterior apical segment. Here it is here, the apical segment of the lower lobe has uh, usually trifurcates into three segments. So here's one, two, and the other one going more apically is this one, this one here, which will be the A. 
Once again, we can have a look down into the basal segments, and here are the basal segments branching off here, and this is the medial, anterior, lateral, and posterior, and I think of that as M, A, L, P, or 7, 8, 9, 10. And we'll just follow those into the lower lobes and that's all normal. Okay, let's go back to the left. So here we are in the left main bronchus and we're going to do, do the same. And so as we come down here, it all looks very normal. You can see just, just here it gives you the idea of slight irregularity. But I think that that's just going to be the cartilage causing some little bit of indentation to, to the airway. I think that, that would be, that's normal. Here's the left upper lobe here and if we head up the left upper lobe we get the left upper lobe proper going more superiorly and then that will branch into the anterior segment going out this way and this is the apico-posterior segment and then we can follow these airways once again up into the apex of, of the left upper lobe and see that they all look normal. Now we'll come back to the lingula which is the other part of the left upper lobe and here's the lingula segment here and this has a superior and an inferior branch. So here's the superior branch of the lingula heading off more superiorly. And as I scroll down through the scan, we see the inferior branch. And that heading out to the lingula, which is in here, uh, also looks very normal. And as we saw before, right in the peripheral of the lingula, there is some movement artifact causing that appearance there. Let's go back and we'll have a look at the lower lobe bronchus. Here's the left lower lobe bronchus. And we're just going to scan down once again. The apical segment comes off posteriorly first, and then it comes down to the basal segments. On the left, there are just three basal segments. The anteromedial go off together. So this is an anteromedial branch there. This is a lateral and a posterior. So there's no seven, it's eight, eight, nine, ten. And there we go. So that looks normal. Now I just have another look at the, the more peripheral airways just to make sure there's no bronchiectasis because bronchiectasis is a common cause for hemoptysis. And when we're looking at the small airways, the airway you can see there should be a slightly less diameter than the corresponding blood vessel. And as you can see, there it is. And the airway wall, you should be able to see it, but it doesn't really stand out. So that's a normal airway wall. It's not thickened, it's not dilated. So there's no bronchitis or bronchiectasis. And the other thing about bronchiectasis is within the periphery of the lung, the peripheral centimetre or so, we shouldn't see any airways. And that's because the airways have become so small we can't actually see them. And I can not, certainly not see any air airways in the periphery, so there are no dilated abnormal airways. Uh, and we look right down to the bases. So if we could see airways down here, that would suggest that there's some bronchial dilatation or bronchiectasis. Okay, so that all looks great. Let's go across to the mediastinal windows. So we just changed the colour scheme. So we've blacked out the lungs and what we can see is the mediastinum. We have a look in the mediastinum for lymph nodes. There's a normal right paratracheal lymph node, nice and small as it should be. And we look all around the trachea, esophagus, main vessels heading up towards the neck and head. Here's the top of the arch of the aorta. And moving down, we can see Subcranial space is clear, no hyalur lymph nodes, and so there's no lymph nodes to be seen. I always like to have a look at the heart and the great vessels, and this is a non-contrast scan. And the good thing about the non-contrast scan is we can look for coronary and vascular calcification, and so especially around the aorta, and then also around the coronary arteries. And so if we come down, we can see this is where the left anterior descending coronary artery is and the right coronary artery come around here, and they stand out if they're calcified. So there's no calcification here, which is good. Uh, and sign of coronary calcification would be a sign of atherosclerosis. And so that all, all looks normal on the mediastinal views. So that's excellent. I'll just put on the to the bone windows now and it just gives us a better view of the bone. So we can see the ribs around here, scapula, and we can see the vertebra with a bit more detail. Um, Occasionally rib fractures can cause hemoptysis, but only if they're significant and they cause pneumothorax or trauma to the lung. And you wouldn't expect to see that unless there was a history of trauma or significant you know, chest pain. 
so that had not been the case and all of the ribs and bones look normal. We've also got a CTPA here which is to exclude pulmonary embolus. Uh, this is a contrast scan so now we can see that the aorta has gone white because of the contrast. It gives us a bit of a better view of the mediastinum. Uh, once again the mediastinum looks normal with no abnormal lymph nodes and here we can see the pulmonary trunk branching into the left pulmon main pulmonary artery and the right main pulmonary artery and certainly they are clear and then we can keep an eye on the pulmonary arteries out to the periphery and make sure that there are no pulmonary emboli and all of those vessels look normal and once again out to the to the right we can follow those vessels and make sure that there's no filling defect to suggest pulmonary embolus and that all looks normal. And the last thing I like to look at in the CT scan is the soft tissues. Um, and you can see here is the pectoral muscle here, which is large muscle. And the black area here is just a thin layer of subcutaneous fat. And so you can see in this patient there is very minimal uh, subcutaneous fat, um, which is good and, and normal, normal muscle. I think that's important because you can get a good idea of body composition based on the CT scan and something that people often don't look at. So once again here you can see intercostal muscles, muscles across uh, the top of the chest and very just a very thin layer of fat which is, which is normal. So there we go, there's uh, a way in which we can look through a CT chest to carefully examine all aspects of it to make sure that we're not going to miss something that could be causing hemoptysis or, or anything else for that matter. Hopefully you found that useful. Okay, see you later.